Alrighty guys, I'm Orthodon, and we are back for ReZero Season 2, Episode 16. So, yeah, we had a very interesting episode. We had auto backstory, which was cool, and then we also had uh, a really cool conversation slash argument where, you know, Amelia was kind of mad that Subaru never got mad, so, you know, Subaru released some of his... Uh, some of his anger and pent up feelings, and it felt like a really good conversation that they had, and it was uh, presented pretty well in the show and everything. But now we have uh, things and stuff happening next. I don't know what's going to be happening next. Whatever, uh, whatever next happens on Subaru's plan, we had Otto and Ram holding off uh, Garfield, and Garfield just showed up all like wounded and stuff. So, uh, but Subaru seemed very confident. So yeah. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens, so let's just start this episode, shall we? We're going to start here in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, now. Oh, past Amelia? Oh. Oh, wait, no, maybe not. Never mind. That wasn't Amelia. That was, uh, yeah... One of the Ryuzus in Young Garfield. Jeez. God. Oh, that's how he got the mark on his head. Yeah, I can't exactly remember which Ryuzu it was. They all have, like, last names or whatever. Jeez. Yeah, that's what I was worried about. Jeez. Well, are we gonna get Garfield's story now, maybe? We got a little bit, obviously. We know something happened with him as a kid. When he went in, he saw some shit that messed him up. Ooh, Amelia. <laughs> mm. Jeez. <laughs> She's like, huh? I will? <laughs> Tramp all over people's hearts with their shoes on. <laughs> Damn. Oh, he took a step back.
Damn. I like the music, too. Damn. Oh, man. Uh, that's what he thinks. So he wanted to stay in here. But he was out of the way of her happiness. Damn, that sucks. Whew. Oh, that's what we were seeing. Uh man. A compelling story from both Otto and Garfield. Ah, uh, man. Oh, shit. Well, oh, crap. Jesus. Shit. Well, here we go again. Big old tiger mode. Well, now what? What are you playing, Subes? Is he gonna bet that he won't? Oh, Shamak! Oh, shit! Oh, his gate? His gate has been weakening and everything. That's not good. What did he just do? Oh, the necklace? I think I see the strap. Oh shit, transforming him back. But why? Huh. That's his sister's necklace, right? Oh, puck. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was cool seeing puck again briefly.
<laughs> oh, he just took it. Jeez. Subaru. Lost the tooth? We still don't know what Subaru did with uh, Rizu. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that music, kick it up. Oh, Rem. Oh shit! What? What's happening? What? Is something going on with his gate? Oh, what? What? He has the invisible hand? I mean... What the heck? Is that the same thing as Petagus? Or was that just his Shamak ability? L or not like Shamak, but his shadow magic that he has access to. Oh shit. Oh. Jeez. <laughs> Revenge. Rawr! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> His damn weird quotes. Well, they're both down. Oh shit. Yeah, the sloth witch. That, that's what I was thinking about. <laughs> Unseen hand. Oh, invisible providence. He in her lap again. Lap pillows heal all wounds. Well, shit. Subaru has a goddamn... Well, if you can ever get to the point of utilizing it well enough. Otto's alive still! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. 
<laughs> there won't be a next time. Yeah. Oh, he gets lap pillows too. <laughs> they get off me already. <laughs> yep. That's a ram we know. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Jeez. Damn. Mama Ram coming in. <laughs> Subtitles just said perfect like a cat. <laughs> Why'd she do that? Did, did she actually say it like that? Perfect. Was he doing a pun at the fact that He's just a giant cat. Oh, did she go to do it? Or do, were they just not in that frame? Oh. Yeah, Garfield. Oh, Ram. Yeah, that was nice. All right, it's going in. Gonna be a hell of a thing if he's the one to liberate Sanctuary after everything. Here we go. His mom. Hmm. It's amazing that he, at that age, the young age, he still remembers his mom even. I mean, unless he just remembers some stories, but... Aww. <laughs> They're adorable. She has the two things around her neck. Yep.
Uh, seems like she has something important to do, though. I'll bring your father back. Oh. That's why she went. Yep. He thought she just left to find happiness. It's not why. Just a lie you told yourself. Moo. Damn. Shit. Got him. Yeah, that's the question to ask. Hmm. Yeah. Uh. Remember that? <laughs> oh, genuine smile. Cool. That was awesome. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah. Definitely some closure. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> A little bit of reluctance in his voice there. <laughs> oh, he's watching. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're older than him, so be lenient.
Jesus, 14. <laughs> a lot younger than I thought he was. It's a jacked 14 year old. <laughs> when we kissed, <laughs> he suddenly realizes. Oh, they're adorable. <laughs> You got this, Amelia. You go, girl. Nice. Oh, his teeth twinkled. All right. <laughs> she has no idea what that first word means, at least. <laughs> Cars, what? Apologize for what? 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 <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I mean, I can only speculate. Oh, he wrote all of the walls. Uh, that's where he was. The, um, all right, cool. We know the answer to that now, too. And then come poop. <laughs> oh, there she goes. All right. Oh shit. I can uh... Jeez. Are you sure you're not envy? <laughs> Jeez. Which is daughter? Oh, she's pulling a Subaru. <laughs> oh. Oh, yes, Amelia! Nobody can lift a Quain stone alone. Alright. That is it, I believe. Yes, it is. That is it for episode 16, guys. Oh, uh, good, good, good stuff, guys. I really love that episode. We had the resolution to Garfield's character, essentially. Well, not like... It, it, he's not out of a story, but... A resolution to this arc of needing to get past him, you know? Um, so that's really cool. 
we uh we got to see a little bit of his his backstory a bit you know when he was really young his mom left them there in the sanctuary and you know the way he he justified it in his head growing up is that his mom didn't love him and you know it i, I it might have made it easier for him to to hate her but he said it in this mind that she left to find her happiness and if he stays here in the sanctuary then he won't risk like running into her he won't be in the outside world he won't you know there's no chance that he will uh hinder her happiness you know and that's the that's the kind of lie that he he made up in order to keep himself from breaking down essentially but we obviously, as we picked that apart, we, you know, obviously found out that he really, or she really did love them, and, you know, he even knew that, he just suppressed that feeling, that's why he, you know, hit his head when he was younger, where where she kissed him, and, and stuff like that, so, man, that was, like, a really compelling story, I really enjoyed it, um, I really love how... Garfield, after all of that, you know, kind of, like, I, I like that he kind of quickly flipped, you know, like, I guess there's some people that could say, like, he came out of that trial and had really, like, changed over to Subaru's side with Subaru, like, calling him boss and stuff like that too quickly, and, and being all chummy with him after everything that's happened. But at the same time, I, I think it's fine the way it worked out. I think uh, I, I enjoy that that way um, better than if it would have, like, lingered with Garfield kind of being shitty about it and everything. Oh, excuse me, and everything, but... But, yeah. The, uh... The fight was also cool. I like how Subaru was able to handle Garfield kind of himself he did have the the crystal his sister's uh necklace crystal thing that apparently puck was inside and gave him some help transforming garfield back uh that was really cool getting a quick little uh puck cameo there um but then you know the rest of the fight is super handled on his own I love the conversation they had during the fight and everything, the way the way Subaru handled it, and even the way Garfield handled it, handled it and everything. But um, also just the fact, like it was crazy when friggin' Subaru used the unseen hand. Um, that was interesting. I, I mean, he he confirmed that that's what it was. Now there was a part I was gonna say it during the reaction, but I didn't want to sound stupid. I was thinking to myself. He has the sloth witch factor, right? But then I couldn't remember because, like, he talked to Echidna a lot. So I was like, wait, does he have the greed witch factor? But I was like, that doesn't sound right. I'm pretty sure it's the sloth witch factor. Um, but, but yeah, so he has the sloth witch factor and he was able to use that unseen hand. Now, you know, what constitutes someone to be an archbishop? Because we knew that, uh, we knew that Pentelgeuse had the witch factor, I think, right? And he had the unseen hand as well. And that's all we really saw. I mean, he had a gospel, too, that he he followed or whatever. But um, does that technically make Subaru the Archbishop of Sloth now that he has that ability? Or is there more to being an arch Archbishop? I'm not sure. But either way, he, he has this power now, and he... You know, he needs to learn how to use it better. He he did all he could to just throw out one fist, but I don't know if he's just going to use it in times of great need or if he's actually going to, like, train himself to use it more. But, I mean, this is a way Subaru could become a competent fighter in this world where so far he's been, you know, kind of pushing through everything with only his sure willpower, you know? And... I bet you anything there's going to be some people that are like, oh, I don't like that he's getting this ability because that means that, you know, the story we've had up until now, um, it's not going to be like that anymore where he just pushes through with raw willpower. He's just going to force his way through with his unseen hand. But I think 
I think the way Subaru is going to use it is emergency situations, I would imagine. I don't think Subaru is just going to address every situation with the unseen hand first. Um, I, I Sorry, I, I already forgot what the hell he called it. Um, but... But yeah, like, I don't think it's going to be something where he defaults to using that 100% of the time. So I think it's going to be, it's going to be fine. And even if he does use it fairly often, I don't think that's going to kill any kind of enjoyment for me. Because I, I do like when a character can, like, fight back. I, I've loved ReZero up till now with Subaru not really being able to do anything except for just, like, push through with his willpower. I mean, physically, when I say that. Obviously, he's done so much, but, like, physically himself, you know, he gets into sword fights and gets his ass beat, you know, pretty much everything he's done has been, you know, assisted with other people who actually have these abilities and stuff, so I don't think it's a big deal that he has them now, too, but I, I do, I do kind of hope he uses them a little sparingly, though, but we'll see. But yeah, the, uh... I just love everything about this episode. The conversation between Subaru and Amelia was was great. I, I love their adorable awkwardness and all that. Just about to go do the trial and reassuring her and, and everything. And, um, and then I loved how when she got in, we found out the reason why she left or he left her bedside that night was to go into the trial room and carve on the walls, you know, you can do it, we're, we're gonna go on a date after, and, and all these motivating things that she can see, like, as one last thing before she goes into the trial, and then maybe as soon as she gets out, but... And then even once she was in the trial, the little bit we got to see was Echidna kind of being very rude, and, you know, Amelia brushing it off and doing the whole, like, Subaru point thing, you know? Um... That was awesome. I love it. Oh, man. That was just cool. The whole episode was cool. I loved it. But yeah. The, uh... What else did we have? I just... I also ran sassiness. I didn't really care for it much at first, but I think it's really worn on me over the seasons, you know? Uh, just... How you you know she cares about these people. It's just she refuses to, like, show it. Except for every now and then, she does, like, a little compliment thing or, or something that is nice and and stuff like that. But, but yeah, she's, she's very stubborn about it for the most part. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's going to be it for me, though, guys. For a great episode, there's there's not too much, like, mystery or speculation to be had. It kind of, like, wrapped itself up, really, like, the only thing left, um, that I could speculate on in the episode is really about what's gonna happen next with, uh, Amelia and Echidna, but, like, I guess what I'm curious on is, is this, uh... Is this what Amelia has seen every time? Has she seen Echidna every time and Echidna just talks trash and is rude and that's why she comes out crying? Or is it stuff about her past and this is just like an interim area where like Echidna is going to be like, hey, I'm going to come here and talk shit to you and then I'm going to send you in to go do whatever it is, you know, the child demands of you. I'm not sure, but I'm looking forward to it regardless, although I feel like it... It might be painful and make me frustrated, but I like Amelia's attitude, so I think that might be my saving grace. So, yeah, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you did. Also, check out my Patreon if you want to see extra content from me on there, where I'm watching Soul Leader and uh, The Queen's Gambit. And also, you can get early access for my other shows, not this one, because I am watching this as it airs and releasing it as it airs. So, yeah, guys. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in my future reactions. Bye-bye.